The simplest way to send Morse code is with a straight key. Most people recognize a key like this. This is the Speedex made by Nye Viking, and this is the key I've used since I was 10 years old back in 1978. It's very simple. It's simply a switch that you push down for a tone. You press it quickly for a dot, and you hold it down a little longer for a dash. This was limited to about 20 words a minute. Professional operators would get a repetitive motion injury from these eventually. Back then, in the old days, they called it glass arm. To prevent that, they had to come up with a better way, which I'll get to in a moment. An early Russian version of this is here. A friend of mine found this at a flea market in New Orleans, he says. And it's the same principle, just a little bit heavier in construction, a little cruder. But I enjoy sending with this. These are straight keys. In order to break the 20 word per minute barrier, and to prevent repetitive motion injuries, there had to be a better way of sending code. Introduce more modern versions. This was the first answer. It is purely mechanical. It's called a semi-automatic key. This is made by the Vibroplex company, which is still in business today. They're still making these keys. This particular key is the Blue Racer made in 1931. I volunteer for the local railroad depot, an historical museum here in our small town of Canby, Minnesota. And I found this in a display cabinet, cleaned it up a little bit, got it working again. It's very fast and you'll notice that this side looks a lot like the straight key that I just showed you. Notice the knob here. This is what you see on this side of the semi-automatic key. And this is what you use to create the dashes manually when using this key. The dots, however, are created automatically. By pressing in this direction, you release a pendulum on a spring here, and it vibrates to create those dots. It will eventually run out of energy, but there are no characters that require that many dots. You can adjust the speed of this key by moving the weights up and down on the pendulum. Right now, it is set for the slowest speed that this particular key can go, which is about 30 words a minute. Remember, the straight keys were limited to 20 words a minute or so. So here, the beginning speed of this particular key being 30 words a minute, it's already 50% faster than the straight key. If you move the weights all the way forward, it goes to 50 words a minute. Here's 30 words a minute. Now I'll change it to 50 words a minute. That's it, 50 words a minute. These are called bugs because Vibroplex that made the first semi-automatic keys and is still in business today making these had as their logo this bug. 
And so just like adjustable wrenches are often called crescent wrenches and facial tissues are called Kleenex, no matter who makes them these days, likewise, some automatic keys are usually just called bugs, regardless of who makes them. But Vibroplex is the only company I'm aware of that manufacture these in mass. As I understand it, a telegrapher would be provided a straight key, but if he wanted to have a semi-automatic key, a bug, he had to provide that himself. And so telegraphers would bring these to work and then bring them home when they were done. While these are still in use today by aficionados, since the late 70s, certainly the early 80s, state of the art has been the electronic key. Here you see a couple of different paddles used for electronic keying. When I say electronic keying, I mean there is a circuit that creates perfect dots and dashes when you press one lever or the other. Remember this one gave you automatic dots, but not dashes, those you had to do yourself. The semi-automatic key, as you will see here, generates perfect dots and perfect dashes. Here you have a single paddle, much like this one, but an electronic keyer can also work with two paddles. Because this has two paddles, the one paddle giving you perfect dots, the other giving you perfect dashes, you can squeeze them together at the same time and those alternate. Depending upon whether you touch the dot paddle first, slowed it down to 13 words a minute, it was at 20. If you touch the dot paddle first, it begins with the dot. If you begin with the dash paddle first, it starts with the dash. You can create every character there is with only two touches of your fingers if you know how to use this iambic paddle. That's what it's called, where you have two paddles that work with an electronic keyer. The electronic keyer that I keep referring to is built right into my radio, which I'm using to generate the tones that you hear. Otherwise, you can use an external keyer, which I have here. Here's an early one, and they make all sorts of different kinds of these. Some of them have memories, and you can program messages that you often use. But a feature of the electronic keyer circuit is that you can change the speed, as you can see here, and dial however fast you want to send your code. So there's 20 words a minute. I can turn it up to 30, which is the starting speed for that semi-automatic semi bug. And that is how the double paddle works with an electronic keyer. Learning the semi-automatic or bug key is a challenge if you're used to these, but it's been a fun challenge. This, in, after 43 years of doing this, this is the first time I've ever touched one of these, so it's been fun to practice with it. I hope you've enjoyed this. If you have any interest in learning Morse code, it's not required anymore to become an amateur radio operator, but it's as popular as ever. People who get into the hobby now learn it because they want to, not because they have to. If you're interested, go to ARRL.org. That stands for the American Radio Relay League, ARRL.org. 
to learn more.